It's hard to argue that the universe that we live in has not increased in complexity over time. The million dollar question, is that just a fluke event or is it set up that way? That the arrow of evolution has to go in that direction. So when I talk about the arrow of evolution, we're looking at the direction, what has happened biologically over the last three and a half to four billion years on our planet. If you look at any evolutionary textbook, they'll have a timeline of what's occurred, and that is the arrow of evolution. And some people argue, well, it's not really an arrow, that's misleading, because that means like we're moving towards something. But when I'm talking about the arrow, what's the general sweep that has occurred? And what we see is a general sweep of simple to more complex forms over time. Not necessarily that it's got a target, but it's moving in a direction towards more complex organisms. So as we move forward, we ratchet up this new level of complexity, and it hasn't been a neat linear passage. What you see is these simple building blocks, say just atoms, can then start to combine and interact to form molecules. And when they do that, you have new entities that now interact to form something else. At each stage, there's a new amount of complexity that comes into being. And when you have that, that allows for new possibilities and the new molecules can lead to cells. And then cells can then interact with each other and lead to multicellular organisms. And so each stage in a sense is prerequisite, is needed to get to the next stage. But you start with the simplest because that's the, where you have to start. And that's what we see in the universe. It starts with electrons, protons, and then atoms, and then molecules form. And then from there, at least on planet Earth, we have life form. And from that point on, life can then get more and more complex. And it tends to move in that direction. I think there's something innate in the way the universe is structured that there is this propensity towards the formation of more complex molecules. So there's something about the chemistry and physics that make the universe amenable to life and sort of set the universe up to move towards life, to make that a possibility. But those simple organisms don't disappear. They're needed, right? You can't get rid of those. They lay the foundation that makes it possible for more complex organisms to exist. Just an example, you know, organisms that can oxygenate the globe make it possible for larger organisms to exist. So you need those simple organisms, they're there, and then they provide the ecosystem that might allow for more complex organisms to come later on. And now, 14 billion years later, you have organisms like you and I that are complex enough to contemplate what's happened <laughs> over these past 14 billion years and have conscious experience. There's certainly been a big change and it begs the question, is there a purpose to this? Is the universe set up so that someone or something like you or I could come into existence? And that's a question that goes beyond the science. But the interesting thing is the science is consistent with the idea that, that there could be a purpose, that the universe could be meant to be the place in which things like you or I come into existence.